A long time ago, and twice as far away, lived a small boy called David. David's father was a shepherd, and he would spend many a night, summer or winter, sleeping under the stars on the hillside overlooking the town of Bethlehem. One winter's night, David was woken from his sleep by his father. Hurry, David, he said. We have to go and see the baby. What baby, father? said David sleepily. The baby king. It's his birthday. A baby king on his birthday, thought David. I must take him a gift. He looked in his sack. All he had was a piece of dry bread and a few almonds left over from his dinner. <sighs> Not much for a king, but it's all I have, he thought. David hurried down the hillside with his father and the other shepherds, leaving the dogs to guard the sheep. They entered a warm stable where a mother, father and a small baby jostled for room with an ox and a donkey. David approached the baby and held out the bread and almonds. The baby's father reached out and touched the offering and as he did, David felt it grow in size and weight in his hands. He looked down and there was a round cake covered in dust as white as the snow on the hillside, the fragrance of fruit and spice reaching his nose. Take it home and eat it, said the baby's father. I can see you're hungry. And just like that, Panforte was born. So, as you can see, it snowed overnight. Winter's arrived just in time for the first of our chestnuts and truffles Christmas recipes. And today we're going to be making panforte. Panforte is a cake from the province of Siena in southern Tuscany, and it's been made there for hundreds and hundreds of years, but it's now associated with Christmas. So the ingredients for panforte are as follows. You've got 150 grams of type zero flour. And if you saw my blog post a couple of weeks ago about Italian flour, you'll know exactly what that means. Um, then we've got 200 grams of almonds, which have been shelled, but have still got the brown skin on them. And then we've got 10 grams of spice mix for panforte, which includes five grams of ground coriander, three grams of ground cinnamon, one gram of ground nutmeg, and one gram of ground cloves. Then we've got 220 grams of granulated sugar, 50 grams of water, 50 grams of honey, 220 grams of candied orange peel, and then 150 grams of candied citron peel. And a citron is a fruit a bit like a lemon, but it has a very, very thick skin. And I'll be doing a blog post about that later in the week. So we start off panforte by taking the almonds, the flour, and the spice, and putting them together in a bowl and giving them a jolly good mix. Mmm. <sighs> These spices really smell like Christmas. Okay, so when we've done that, we put that to one side, and then we're going to make a sugar syrup. And we're going to do this by putting the sugar, the water, and the honey into a saucepan. Give it a good, it's always a little bit sticky. Get every last bit out. Okay. And then we're going to heat this and what we want is the sugar to melt into the water and the honey to melt together to make a liquid. Um, we want to do it quite gently because we don't want it to turn into a caramel. 
And once the sugar and honey have melted together, what we then do is add our candied peel. And mix it all together. And then we continue to cook gently for about 30 seconds, just to make sure that all the peel is coated with the sugar syrup. And there we go. And then we're going to take the syrup mixture and we're going to mix it in with our nuts and flour. And again, give it a jolly good stir. What we're looking for here is for everything to come together and um, for the nuts and the peel uh, to be evenly distributed within the mixture. You don't want any powder. It's going to be quite a thick mixture, um, but that's what you're looking for. Give it a good stir. Okay, so when everything's mixed together, you want to take a baking tin. And here I've got a round baking tin, and what I've done is I've buttered and lined it with greaseproof paper, but then in the bottom I've put a circle of rice paper, and the rice paper is going to stick to the pan forte, and you're going to eat it with the cake. So, what I do is I just put my mixture into the cake tin, pour it all in. Like so it's a bit of a bitty mixture at the moment, but that really is what it's supposed to be like. Okay, the last bit. Get your hands in there. And then what you're going to do is press it down with a spoon. And you want to press it down so it's pretty level. It will look very bumpy, the top will look very uneven, but it's actually supposed to look like that, so don't worry too much. Let's just smooth it out with a spoon. And then, when it's smoothed down, when it's nice and level, we then put this into a very hot oven. It needs to be about 220 degrees centigrade, and it goes in for about 20 minutes. When it comes out, it will still be quite soft, uh, but don't worry about that, it will be cooked, and it will go harder when it's had the chance to, to cool down. So, I'm gonna go and put this in the oven, and um, I'll see you when it's done. So, my pan forte had 20 minutes in the oven and then a good hour to cool down afterwards. And as you can see, it's come out like a, like a cake with the um, rice paper firmly stuck to the bottom. So, you'll remember from the story at the beginning that it said the top of the pan forte was completely white. And this is because it gets covered in icing sugar. So here I've got some icing sugar and a sieve. And I'm going to sift the icing sugar onto the top, making sure I completely cover every inch of the surface of the pan forte in icing sugar. There we go. Has to be really, really white. A little bit more. That's it just as white as the snow that's really on the mountains uh, today, as you saw earlier. Okay, so my pan forte is now finished. I'm now going to transfer it onto a serving dish. And there we go, pan forte di Siena. So I'm just gonna cut into it and uh, try a slice. It should be a little bit crunchy on the outside, which is why uh, you cooked it at 220 degrees, but nice and soft in the inside. There we go. And it'll come out in lovely slices. Beautiful. Ah, oh, yes. As you can see, you've got all the almonds on the inside, uh, but also the beautiful gooiness of the candied peel. And I know it's not Christmas for another few weeks, but I have to try it. Mmm. Mmm. 
Mm. It's really beautiful. It's beautiful and soft on the inside, but crunchy with the almonds. Mm. So that's the first of our Christmas recipes here at Chestnuts and Truffles, but it's going to be Christmas for the next few weeks as we work our way through some Tuscan Christmas classics. So click the subscribe button if you want to be informed of new videos, and I will see you next week. Well, it is almost Christmas.